Hello, welcome to this video on my walk of the 8th of July 2021. I started with a tree right near the car park, just the bark, and then I enjoyed the willy wagtails chasing insects just above the water. And then a pelican flew in. It landed in the lake and started swimming fast. Those birds can really swim fast. One of my ambitions in life was to get good photos of pelicans so I could do drawings and paintings. It looks like I'm getting plenty of great resource material. And there's a peewee. I always like to find the peewees. I saw one near my house the other day. I was so excited. Didn't get a photo of it though and it wasn't calling. I'm about to walk to that shelter shed. That's a bit of a walk ahead of me. Still have to walk along a little bit and go over a bridge. And I was standing on the bridge when I got this photo. As I continued to walk along, I spotted this pelican standing on the rock that the cormorant had been on in an earlier video. And then once I was at the shelter shed, I could walk all the way forward. This projects out into the lake and that's Bird Island. And I get quite close to it. It's the closest I can get to that island. And there's the pelican with some, I think they're coots that are swimming around there and there's a swamp hen in the background there somewhere amongst all that grassy stuff that's growing behind the pelican. I'd had enough of a look at the pelican and the coots and I, I was about to leave this shelter and then I looked to my left and down, almost straight down from the ground that I was standing on, I spotted the egret and it was hunting and there was ducks and coots swimming in the water, just out the other side of the water weeds there. Now, when I took these photos of the egret, I had a close look at them and I decided that the white on its back was a little bit overexposed. So when I went home that night, I got out my camera and the manual and I adjusted the settings a little bit to try to compensate for the overexposed parts of the egrets and other white birds. On the other side of the shelter, I saw for the pelican and there it was still standing on its rock. I kept walking along and I got a few more shots of the pelican from different angles. The path on the other side there, I'm going to be walking along that shortly, but I've got to cross a little bridge first to get there. Can you see that black bird behind the pelican with the red beak? That's a black swan. I finally got to see the swans at the lake this year. It was only one of them though. Unfortunately, this is about as close as I'm going to get to it in this walk, but at least we've seen the swan. You'll see a bit more of it as I walk around the corner, but it's further away. There it is on the right. Had to walk across this bridge next. There's another little pool on the other side, but I don't go over there. This is the pelican from behind. That's Bird Island. So we've walked around to the other side now. The swan's got its head down. Obviously, see the other birds, when they have to eat off the bottom, they have their tail sticking up, but the swan just leans forward. It's got a long neck, it can reach the bottom. I was so excited to see the swan at last. Other people have been getting photos of it, but I've been missing out. It keeps its head down for such a long time. It doesn't keep it up for very long though, so it was really hard to get photos of it. In my next video, I've got a little bit of video of it really clear, but not in this one. Look, it's shaking its head. Must be washing something out of its beak. See the sh where the shelter shed is now. I've come all the way past it, and that pelican's still sitting on its rock. The 
There's another pelican there. There's a lot of pelicans around. I think there were three, two on the island and one on a rock. I'll head off now to another part. Oh, there's another final picture of the swan for today. At least we've seen it. We'll leave it there with its head down. Swamp hen. This bird was squawking so loudly. It was coming at me so fast. I didn't think I'd get any pictures. I managed to only get two and it flew directly over my head with a sulfur crested white cockatoo. And then I saw these babies. I think they must be chicks of the coot variety because they were with the adults. And then here's two baby coots on their own. But the adults were there very close by. These grasses and plants were growing very close to where the coots were. Now this is a very common flower, you find it everywhere, it's an Australian native. When the flowers have been pollinated they go red so the insects can't see them because the flowers want the, all of their flowers to be pollinated. They don't want the insects coming to the flowers that have already been pollinated. I love how the pelican tucks its head down as it glides along. Incoming pelican. Now what's going to happen? Two of them together. Should be some fun. That grating honking horn noise you can hear quite often seems to me to be coming from one of the houses at this end of the lake. I'm not sure if it's produced by a bird or a, some sort of a horn. I think it might be artificially produced by some human activity. We're going to see the willy wagtail again now. I love to watch the willy wagtail jump around in the grass. They brave little things that attack the cats and other animals for fun. At this point I've now walked over the bridge and this is the pool between bridge and the little weir and they are usually show you a close-up of the flower but that's the whole tree or most of the grevillea bush with the yellow flowers and I thought that was pretty just a reflection of the sky and the water. I've already walked along that path on the other side of the lake I'm heading back to the car park now cormorants sitting on the on the fountain as well as on the pipes over there. They're dropping the level of the lake very slowly at the moment. They're expecting it to be quite empty by October and they're going to have heavy machinery in there then dredging it out because it's got very silted up in places and once they've got it all cleaned up they're going to plant new plants in it and after they've finished that planting they'll put more water back in it and then plant more plants so it'll be a very refreshed 
lake and hopefully it won't need quite as much maintenance as it's been needing over the past few years. There's been quite a few floods and things and it has done a lot of silting up of the lake. There are some very deep patches and they're going to be very careful that they take care of the wildlife in the lake which is why they're emptying it so slowly. It'll take them a few months to get it down to where they need it to be to bring the machinery in to dredge it. There will still be plenty of water in the lake for the fish and the birds. It's just that they've got to drop it down enough to be able to get rid of the silt. That's my little favourite little pied cormorant. I'm going to do a painting of it next. I've already done the drawing. During my walk last weekend, it saw me. I was videoing it while it was playing in the water. It was feeding and splashing and having a lovely time. And it noticed me, so it just glared at me. And then it flew off. So I got more video of it flying away than I got of it swimming around and splashing and having fun. There's more swamp hens and the pelicans. It's getting quite late now. I'm usually home by this time of the day when I do my walks. The sky was going pink but my camera corrected that. It knew that it was sky so it has to be bluish grey instead of orangish pink. That's a little blue flower growing beside the path on the way back. And that's a final picture of the pelican. I'm up high now, almost at the car park. And this is the end. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a like and follow me if you would like to see more of them. So bye bye for now and thank you for watching.